The following video covers an item from the FAA Commercial Pilot Glider Practical Test Standards. Area of Operation 4, Launches and Landings. Item R, Task, Landings, Slips to Landing. The examiner will select one type of slip from the knowledge area for demonstration. The objective of this task is to determine that the applicant, one, exhibits knowledge of the elements related to forward, side, and turning slips to landing with and without the use of drag devices. Two, recognizes the situation where a slip should be used to land in a desired area. Three, establishes a slip without the use of drag devices. Four, maintains the desired ground track. Five, maintains proper approach attitude. Six, makes smooth, proper, and positive control applications during recovery from the slip. And seven, touches down smoothly within the designated landing area. A forward slip is used to steepen the approach path without increasing airspeed and with the track of the glider aligned with the runway centerline. Therefore, in a forward slip, the nose of the glider may be pointed away from the runway. A side slip is used when compensating for a crosswind. In the side slip, the nose of the glider is pointed approximately straight to the runway with the upwind wing lowered. The resultant track of the glider and the longitudinal axis remain approximately aligned with the runway center line. Turning slips are accomplished by establishing a slip then increasing the amount of aileron on the lower wing, causing a controlled slipping turn. Slips to landing without the use of drag devices. The scenario is a failure of a drag device such as spoilers, air brakes, or landing flaps, possibly due to a mechanical failure. When the drag device simulated failure is announced by the examiner, the applicant should verbally acknowledge the situation, enter the landing pattern and immediately enter a slip on the downwind leg with the low wing towards the runway in order to maintain a visual reference to the runway environment, aim point, touchdown point, and desired stopping point. A normal rate of descent in the pattern is achieved by slipping. The pilot may observe that the indicated airspeed may be much lower than normal due to lower dynamic pressure at the pitot tube. Therefore, a pitch attitude that is typical of normal glide should be held, with very little increase in actual airspeed when the glider comes out of the slip. A turning slip is used to make the turns to base and final. On short final approach, the amount of slip throughout the pattern should have been adequate to possibly allow the examiner to announce that air brakes, spoilers, or flaps may now be applied if the slipping approach would have resulted in a landing within the available length of runway or in a designated area. The pilot must not force the glider onto the runway, nor allow a PIO, pilot-induced oscillation, to occur. The landing should result in a smooth round out and touchdown with the longitudinal axis of the glider aligned with the runway to avoid side loads on the landing gear. Common student errors in the forward slip which is used to steepen the landing approach without significant increase in airspeed. Indecision about entering the slip or confusing the purpose of the side and forward slips dangerously skidding the glider instead of slipping the glider. Rough handling of the controls, creating an unnecessarily rapid yaw rate instead of moving smoothly in and out of the slip. Not maintaining control of the slip with the appropriate application of aileron and rudder, therefore moving in and out of the slip. 
If the slip has resulted in an excess loss of altitude, then a return to normal flight is required to reestablish the correct descent profile, then reapplying the slip as required in order to maintain the desired descent rate and profile. Allowing an excessive increase in airspeed by pitching the glider nose below the sight picture of a normal glide, perhaps influenced by the airspeed indicator reading lower than normal due to the reduced dynamic pressure at the pitot tube. Not aligning the glider with the runway extended center line on final approach. On final approach, slow to smoothly come out of the slip back to a normal wings level flight in order to avoid a hard landing or having a wing dangerously close to the ground. Allowing any crosswind aloft to cause an overshoot of the final approach leg. Landing with the longitudinal axis of the glider not aligned with the runway, causing a side load on the landing gear not landing in the designated area. Forcing the glider onto the runway instead of making a smooth round out and touchdown. On landing rollout, not maintaining control of the glider if it tends to weather vane into a crosswind. Many of the same errors occur on both the forward slip and the side slip since both types of slips use similar flight control inputs. The difference is that the pilot intentionally orients the fuselage in a manner that results in the desired track over the ground. Again, a forward slip is used to lose height without gaining airspeed and with a desired ground track. A side slip is used to counter crosswind drift resulting in the desired ground track on final approach to the runway. It is very important that the pilot initiate a proper entry into a slip and never skid the glider. <music>